happy Sunday. I just finished reading this book. It was literally such a five star read. I'm late reading it for my book club, but whatever. Anyway, I'm coming on here. This week, we're going to read books that I'm not excited to read together, but they're on my physical TBR, so we're gonna try to do it anyway. I'm not a coho girly, okay? Ay, 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 ay. I bought Verity a while ago. It was like a buy one, get one 50% off thing. And then I was uh, sent November 9th in a PR package, and then Archer's voice was gifted to me by a friend and it's like one of the most popular standalone romances on the internet. So this week we're going to be reading these books together. We're going to call it Reading Stereotypical Book Talk Books All Week Long. And I don't think I'm going to like these, but let's form some opinions, I guess. And so you'll see I've got a two bookmark situation going on. So this one represents where I want to be by the end of Monday. And then this is just like where I currently am. A what? I was documenting a crime. Have a good day. Me and Gary got a Okay, so we made it through chapter one on Scathe. <laughs> we get to chapter two. It's the first male POV, Ben, or whatever his name is. Literally says, I seem to have a one track mind, and that track leads straight to the two things I shouldn't even be thinking about right now her boobs, both of them. And like the next several paragraphs, which is like half a page, just feels very forcibly trying to put his mind in the gutter. And I'm like, this is unnecessary. Ick. And also, I'm sorry, but if somebody comes up to me and goes, I just find it difficult to control my indignation in the presence of absurdity, instant red flag. That's so pretentious and it feels so put on. I'm like, you're feeding me some bullshit right now. No, thank you. And now there's an entire paragraph where he's wondering what kind of underwear she's wearing. Please note, I am on page 34. Like, what is going on? down for sleep. My husband just got out of the shower. I can finally sit down and eat my dinner in some peace and quiet. Let's do a little bit of reading while we eat. Hopefully I don't get tomato soap on this, but if I do, that's okay. Whatever. That's life. God, again with the panties. This is just giving me the ick. All right, it's Sunday night. I'm about to go to bed. I made it to page 74. I made it to page 74, so I'm already halfway to my goal for tomorrow. This has the potential to be a good book, but something about it is just off. So, okay, so I don't read synopses, so I don't know what anything is ever going into books. And the gist of this is a boy and a girl meet, okay? Fallon and Ben, they meet when they're 18 on November 9th. It's the anniversary of this big fire that she was in. She's covered in burn scars from it. And he basically intervenes and stands up for her to her dad, who just sucks. And then they agree, okay, well, she's about to go to New York City and like move across the entire country from LA literally that night. So they can't get into a relationship, but they're like, okay, well, what if we meet up once a year on this exact date in this exact location and hold each other accountable for these things we wanna do? Like the concept is there. But the interactions are weird and some of the exposition is weird like a lot some of it is way too simplified like mind in the gutter and at one point he was like trying to like talk he was joking about like the color of her panties and she's like oh sweet talking me isn't like isn't gonna get you the results you want i'm like sweet talking what <laughs> sweet talking who sweet talking where so i don't know the ideas are good the execution is off i don't know we'll check in tomorrow and also, if you're looking at my face going, oh my god, her skin, I don't know, oh my god, her nose. I've had a cold, my nose is red and flaky, and I'm full of congestion. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. I tried to put on some lashes today. I did, I tried to put on these lashes today. They got from Lashify, don't mind those sounds, I'm tripping over toys. They were way too long. I looked goofy in them. Some women look so beautiful in these super long, like wispy, gorgeous lashes. And I looked stupid, so I ordered some different lashes, and I'm hoping that this next set that I get is going to be a lot better. We'll see. I'll let you know if you care about that. <laughs> All right, I've got Ritz crackers, chocolate eggs, water. So nice, I know. And let's see how much of this stupid book I can crank out today.
Listen, I'm just going to say it. Every single time this Ben guy is, like, correcting Fallon when she's, like, being insecure or saying no of some sort, he's giving me so many red flags. Also, it's probably really difficult to tell, but we're, like, mid-eclipse right now. Crazy! Okay, but see, like, here's another weird example of... What am I saying? Okay, but, like, here's another really weird example of dialogue. Like, Ben's brother Ian gets home, and the first thing he says is, Where's my little bitch? But he's talking about his dog. What? When like, how is she living in New York but she doesn't have a job? Like she literally has a gig with community theater but it doesn't pay her. New York City is one of the most expensive cities to live in in the world. Like where is she getting her money from if her dad's broke? kids in bed, my husband's out of the shower, dinner's made, kitchen is clean, living room is picked up, you know the drill. I want to get at least 50 more pages read tonight and then that way I can, it'll set me up to easily finish the book tomorrow and we can move on to our next read of the week. Which I'm probably going to do any mini mighty mo to figure out which one that's going to be. I did just post a candid thoughts video on TikTok really quickly, just like a little update and I mean it's nothing I haven't already said on here but just talking about how the exposition and the dialogue in this like it's disappointing because I feel like the idea could have been so good and the execution is just really falling flat. But I'm going to finish this book because I said I was going to. And here we are. So let's finish the book. Okay, so I made it to page... What? Where's the page number? There you go. Made it to page 193. This is my goal marker for today. The plan to finish this tomorrow. And then I don't know if we're going to move on to Mia Sheridan next or my other goal book, but see y'all on Tuesday. Hi, happy Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah, it's Tuesday. Guys, look what happened. So I got my son this little butterfly garden for Christmas. And it was like you had to order the caterpillars separately, obviously, because you can't just like have live caterpillars. And they turned into butterflies today. Look at this. There's one, and there's two. Number three is down here. So that's been the exciting news of the morning. Anyway, I've got these, here. I got these press-on nails today, so I'm gonna do press-on nails and read, and I'll show you the playlist that I like this to listen to when I'm reading when I'm alone, because <laughs> God forbid I put on music while I'm around other people. <laughs> Mom problems, if you know, you know. And. Yeah, let's see how much we can get read before my son wakes up. All right, what I listen to, it's literally this guy. It's made by Spotify. Instrumental reading, play, we do a little shuffle, K, immaculate. It's so good. on page 211 and can I just say this is all quite toxic and violent I will say she has a knack for the soapy scenes those are I, th I think that's the redeeming quality of this book at this point oh my god what page am I on what page am I on oh my god I'm on 227 and I just had like a huge truth bomb dropped I just figured out why Kyle punched him I'm like <gasps> I'm trying to see how this can actually spin it to be convincing and make sense because at this point I'm like what it's so sociopathic. Oh my god. Happy Wednesday. In case you haven't caught on yet, I like to film when my kid is asleep. Uh, because he's two and he does not mind his own business. And I don't want him on the internet. Therefore, nap time filming, here we are. So I did not, I know I was going to regret not filming this last night, but I finished this book last night. I give it a two and a half. What I think she does well. The drama scenes are so soapy and exciting that genuinely, I did have a good time with the drama in this, okay? Here's where my hangups are. First and foremost, and I already said this ad nauseum, so I'm not gonna beat a dead horse. The exposition and the dialogue, they're cringy. I don't like it. The weird quotes pull me completely out of the book. I'm like, that is not realistic to me whatsoever. Like, if you're going to be like writing in romance, I think there's a level of, a level of nuance and subtlety that needs to go into those things, that it's like the, the banter was not bantering and 
you cannot convince me otherwise. I will say I like the hooks, like the way that she brought it all back around in the end. I was like, okay, I actually like how you did that. However, it's like everything else was off. Like it's it's rooted in the characterizations. The characters were rooted in cheap tricks rather than like a, at the risk of repeating myself, subtlety and nuance. I don't know, two and a half stars. Do I regret reading it? No, because now I have an opinion and that's what I went into this week wanting. And I'm sure you're like, why are you reading books that you don't want to read? Because I want to have opinions on them. Okay, these freaking books, not specifically this one, but like this author gets brought up so much that I'm like, I want to be able to articulate why I'm not a fan. Now, I did start Verity. I'm almost 50 pages in, and I know a lot of people have said this, but I have to agree, it feels like another author wrote this book. Like this writing does not feel the same as this writing. Granted, I know I'm only, again, 50 pages in, but it makes me wonder like, why is she not writing more thriller? Why is she writing romance? Like, this might be her genre. Like, this might be what she needs to be doing. I'll let you know about that one. A really interesting start. I don't really even know it. I don't really have any thoughts yet. I think everything is still coming together. No weird quotes yet, which is reassuring. Happy to report that. I know a lot of people who read this are like, oh my gosh, I couldn't put it down. It was so twisty turny, so many things I didn't see coming. So I'll keep you posted as I go. Other than that, we had some book mail today, so I thought I'd do like a little baby book haul of just books that I've gotten over the last few days, or I should say books I was sent over the last few days because I actually didn't purchase any of these. First up, I got The Deer and the Dragon by Piper CJ. So Bloom slash Source, but yeah, Bloom Books sent me this one. Bloom Books sent me this one. So thank you so much. I'm so excited. It's giving like dark romanticy, which is so exciting. So, okay, yay. I'm excited to check that one out. The author herself, Rachel Unric, 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 sent me this one, A Brilliant Life, My Mother's Inspiring True Story of Surviving the Holocaust. She emailed me, she was like, hey, I saw your video of where you were crying to a little life, so if you like sad books and if you like crying, then can I send you my book? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. So really excited to check this one out. Thank you, Rachel, for sending me this. And then my dear Karen, sent me, so I beta read this book for her last year. It was the first book I've ever beta read. So she sent me a finished copy. And then <laughs> this isn't so much a book as it is. This is beta read for her book too. So she was so sweet and sent me a bound copy. So Karen, if you're watching this, you're a real one. And then lastly, this one just showed up today, but Simon & Schuster sent me A Short Walk Through a Wide World by Douglas Westerbeek. This is not an arc, this is a finished copy, but still I'm so excited to dig into this. I saw this featured somewhere as like a really anticipated release and I was like, oh wait, yeah, I'm excited to check this out. A dazzlingly epic novel that charts the incredible adventurous life of one woman as she journeys through the, or as she journeys the globe trying to outrun a mysterious curse that will destroy her if she ever stops moving. Well, the synopsis is giving like Addie LaRue inspired vibes. I'm excited to check this out. I'll let you guys know because I personally loved The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and so I will let you know if you like that book, if you would also like this book. Another update, so Fable, I am in the process of becoming an affiliate for them, which is so exciting. It means I get to be like a moderator on there. I've got a book club that I just actually gave it an actual name. It's called The Last Minute Book Club, devoted to people like me who tend to read the book club book at the last minute. But it's just gonna be a really fun space. We're gonna read a lot of different kinds of books, like fantasy, romance, lit fic, um, obviously diverse picks too. So. I would say it's good for people who are mood readers who like to read a variety of things versus people who like to stay specifically within one genre. That being said, April's pick is going to be The Poppy War by our beloved RF Kuang. I have had this trilogy sitting on my shelf for so long. I'm so excited to finally dig into it. This is not book related, but three of the nails that I put on with you guys yesterday have already fallen off. So I don't know that I'm going to be the press on queen. I don't know. I feel like I should just cave and go back to the salon, but... I'm holding out. I'm being stubborn. So I need to film a little bit for TikTok slash Instagram, and then I'm excited to see. I want to get at least 50 more pages read in this book before my son wakes up. My goal is to get to about a page 150. By the end of the day, I want to get halfway through the book. Guess who's probably not hitting a reading goal today? This girl right here. I hit the worst reading slump, or not slump, reading slump. I hit the worst energy slump this afternoon. My kid's sleeping in the room next door, so that's why I'm kind of whispering, but 
Oh my god, I was so tired I couldn't see straight. I don't know if it's adrenal, I don't know if it's hormonal. I don't know, but my like 2 to 5 p.m. slump girlies, the girlies who couldn't get it. So I'm going to do my best to read until bed and not doom scroll. I did actually post a TikTok for the first time in like forever. I can actually do some TikTok. My content well has been so dry lately. I've been so excited about YouTube that I feel like my other channels are now falling by the wayside. How do y'all do all the channels at once? How are you guys doing this? Do you have superpowers? Do you have a personal assistant? No, I'm just kidding. I know you don't. I don't accuse you of things. I love a personal assistant, but I'm going to see how many pages I can knock out in this thing. I'm like a quarter of the way in, so I'm not horribly behind, and we'll see what we can do tomorrow, but whatever. This is kind of a cute angle. Like, I'm not mad about this. My screen flips up like that on my camera, so in case you're wondering what I'm looking at, I'm looking at my screen to make sure that I'm in the frame. And hear me out. This looks kind of weird. Actually, I don't think it looks that weird on camera. It looks like brown in person, but it's my, um, what's it called? My Moon Juice Magnesium. And then I got these. They were two for seven at Sprouts today. But it's this, like, pomegranate sea moss gel drink. I don't know. Cheers. <laughs> Sleepy Girl Mocktail, if you will. It tastes like medicine. <laughs> it tastes like medicine. Friday. I'm pretty sure I completely forgot to film yesterday. Frankly, I was out living my life and like running around and doing things with my kid. In short, I did not finish this book yesterday like I had wanted to. However, today I am on page 186. It's another situation where I feel like the idea was really interesting, but the execution is falling flat for me. We'll see how I feel at the end of it, but it's another like cool idea mid execution. It's giving me Gone Girl vibes but not quite as good, not quite as good. And again, it just feels like everything is unnecessarily sexual. And I'm not saying that because I don't like spicy books. Like I have plenty of spicy books. It just doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel purposeful. It just feels like the male gaze and kind of gross is really the best way I can put it. Anyway, my son's down for his nap as he usually is. Other than that, I wanted to show you guys, I got, I wanted to show you guys, I got a couple of books yesterday. We popped by a local bookstore because I wanted to get a blazer from a boutique that was right next door. So first of all, I'm doing Emily Henry next week. I picked, I got People We Meet on Vacation because I want to read all of her backlogs. I read Happy Place mm, almost a year ago now. Loved it. And for some reason, I just have not been bothered to pick up an Emily Henry book since. So I got that one. Um, I'm going to read the rest of her works next week in preparation for Funny Story coming out on the following Monday, which I'm so excited about. Now, I also picked up The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi. I actually have the special edition of this book, but I think I'd rather read the paperback version of it. That's the only time I'm going to be buying multiple editions of things is like, if I have a special edition, I don't really want to read that copy. I, want, I would rather read like a normal paperback hardback copy. Also got, I never heard of this one. It's called Unbound by Christy Healy. But from what I was told by the gal helping me at the store, it's like a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which I'm a sucker for Beauty and the Beast retellings, but beauty is the beast. So I'm really excited to pick this one out. I think, I can't remember if she said it's a trilogy or a standalone. It might be a standalone. I'm a sucker for a good standalone because I feel like it's really hard these days. I don't know if people just want to keep things going or if it's hard to wrap things up in one book, but I feel like it's hard to find a good fantasy standalone these days. So I'm really excited to dig, to dig into that one. When will I get to it? Who knows? Who knows? I think May is going to be my month of chaos. This month I actually have pretty planned out. So Let's get some reading done. I'm on track to get Verity finished today, which I'm so excited for. And then it'll be Archer's Voice this weekend, plus book club on Sunday. If the gals who come are cool and consent to it, then I'm definitely gonna like film a little bit of that. It's a small group, but it's just so fun. These gals are so sweet, and I'm so excited to meet up and chat about this book with them. Let's get some reading done. I forgot to mention, I still sound sick. I'm still sick. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're just doing the best we can. I'm on chapter 16, and I'm at the part where they're like, oh yeah, we, pro we processed your advance, it should hit your account any minute. What if, and hear me out, this is a prediction, what if all of these books are written by an author that one of them chooses, and she is being completely freaking scammed right now? Anyway, that's my prediction. I'll check in if I'm correct or not. It could be completely unhinged.
Okay, Yay. I'm on 266. Here's another prediction. What if, oh, you found your bracelet, good. What if Jeremy wrote the manuscript and now he's trying to trap Lo in there and Verity didn't actually do anything. See, case in point, another oddly placed, out of context, like just vulgar, overly sexualized passage. I feel like all of my predictions were more exciting than what actually happened in that book. I think I'm gonna give that one a two and a half. I gotta think on it. I'll be checking in with a better update soon. My pizza's almost done cooking. I'm just glad I wanted to get that book done before dinner was ready. So, hey. And so my next read now, my first Mia Sheridan, we're gonna read Archer's Voice now. And I hope, hopefully this one lands for me. I'm kinda nervous because this one's also really hyped up. I get so nervous reading high, like really hyped up books on the internet. Wish me luck. Obviously I'll be checking in. We're gonna be doing this together. Hi, happy Saturday. It is 4.30 in the afternoon. We're outside. The boys are over there playing and I'm going to be, I wanna to get to page 188, 188 <laughs> in this book today. So we're just gonna do some really chill reading outside. Enjoy the weather. It's finally so nice outside. I'm so ready for spring. It's Saturday night, my son is asleep, my husband is in the basement watching some big UFC thing. I have the living room to myself. The night is young. I wanna knock out about 100 more pages of this. I am about 50 pages in. It's kinda slow reading when my son's awake. Um, but I will say I'm already more hooked in this book than I am in either of the other two books I've read this week. So I'm cautiously optimistic. I also, so, I mean, this is only my third YouTube video ever, like, on this channel, so I also want to make it clear that I'm a Dramini girly, I'm a fanfic girly through and through, and so I, I tend to have either an ebook or a fanfic going on my phone slash my Kindle app, so when I'm putting my kid to sleep or just, like, when I'm in a situation where I don't have a physical book, I still have something that I can read and, like, entertain my brain with, and right now I'm reading Greenlight, and it is so good. I mean, I'm barely into it, like maybe 10% of the way into it. And that's being generous, but I'm already loving it. Like the writing is so freaking good. It's so freaking good. I'm telling you, these fanfics are masterpieces. So if anybody watching this wants to know more about like fanfic recommendations, Dramione 101, whatever, I can definitely, definitely do some more content on that because I'm a fan. I'm a stan. I am. Anyway, the night is young, it's 8.45. I can easily hit my halfway goal today. Now, tomorrow, I will say, tomorrow I do have book club. So, I will be taking a little break tomorrow afternoon to do that, but I'm hoping to have this book finished by tomorrow night. I think I can do it. I can move mountains. Okay, now hold on, there's a little thing about Chiron the centaur, like literally before the story even starts, I didn't even notice it. and listen to this. Chiron's wound symbolizes the transformative power of suffering, how personal pain, both physical and emotional, can become the source of great moral and spiritual strength. I love that, that's so interesting. Okay, I'm on page 83, right here. Just finished chapter 10, and I gotta say one thing that I think Mia Sheridan's doing really well in this book is there are levels of conflict right? So you obviously have the initial conflict of what happened to Archer so that he loses his voice. And then you have the next, the next layer of, okay, what's Bree's deal? Like, what is she running away from? What's the full picture of that? Then you also have this layer of generational repeating things where all of like Archer's dad and his uncle's Apparently all three of them were in love with his mom and that was like a thing where all the boys competed over her mom And now you're getting this Travis versus Archer situation over Bree. So it's like 
things are repeating themselves all over again. And then you also have like the town and these developers, the ha the Hales, who are like the people who like run the town basically, and how they want to develop the whole place. And so I'm appreciating all the different levels of conflict here because it feels like there are a lot. There's a lot going on. It's giving it a very three dimensional plot. Um, the characters at this point, I don't know how well developed they are, um, but I gotta say, I'm actually getting really into this one. I'm excited. I don't know how accurate the PTSD representation is, so I don't. I don't know about that, but just because I don't really know that much about specifically PTSD. But yeah, so far I'm actually really digging this book. I'm pleasantly surprised. I was kind of nervous because it's really popular with like young 20-somethings and I'm a 30-something. So I was like, mm, I might not be the target reader for that, but I'm actually really digging this. I'm excited about that. Yay for enjoying a book. He smiled. He did a real smile. Oh, tearjerker. All right, it's 11.30 at night. I made it to page 132, but I cannot keep my eyes open any longer. So I'm gonna go to bed with the goal of finishing this tomorrow. Oh my God, okay, so it's Sunday morning. My kid woke me up early, so we're just up and I'm reading, and oh my God, she just made him food. And he's just thanking her repeatedly because it's like, oh my God, think about it, like his mom died when he was seven. He hasn't had somebody taking care of him in such a long time. I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting so choked up. I think this book is actually really gonna get me. I was questionable, but I think I'm a believer now. I'm a believer. Now listen here, this guy Travis, I just know he's gonna hurt my sweet baby Archer and I will not stand for it. I will not stand for it. I love this book. Sweet baby Archer. Book club got canceled. Nobody could make it. So it's nap time. I showered. I washed the oil I had in my hair. I had like an oil treatment in. Washed it out. I'm a clean girl now. We're going to finish this book. And I'm hoping I can actually get this video up tonight. Because I only have like 120 pages left of this. Maybe less. But I think I can get this done like either not by the time that nap time's over. Then shortly after that. And we're on fire, baby. Sad about book club. Happy to be able to get things done anyway. I swear to God, if he thinks he's about to lose her in a car accident the way he lost his mom, I'm gonna be unwell. The way that everything is starting to come together, I literally just got chills. Like, spoilers. I mean, I'm gonna put spoiler alert at the beginning of this video too, but he's Connor's oldest son, which means he, which means he owns all the land in the town, which means he can stop the developers. This has gone in a way that I, I love how this is all coming together. This, I'm, I'm loving this book. I'm loving this book. This is a five star read for me. She still has got to take it home. We still have less than like 80 pages left, but oh my God, I'm loving this book. <laughs> Someday, oh, I'm getting choked up. Someday when we're old and gray, I'm gonna look at you lying in bed beside me just like this and I'm going to look into your eyes and know that it's only ever been you. And that is gonna be the great joy of my life. <laughs> Archer! <laughs> You're telling me he dies? You're kidding me right now. He's not dead.
He doesn't fully die. <laughs> Thank God. This is the best book I read this week. This was a five star read for me. I loved this. I gobbled this up. I wasn't sure if this was going to be for me because I feel like this one tends to be really popular among like, let me see. Oh, I was zoomed in because this one definitely tends to be popular with like well, teens, early 20s. And I see why for sure. But like, this was so sweet. This was so romantic. So minor violence, I wouldn't chalk it that high on the list of trigger warnings and things like that, but like there's some violence in here. But I loved it. I loved the characters. I thought it was so unique. Archer's my baby. I will not take any criticism on him. I love him. With a happily ever after. This was so good. If you're still here at this point, thanks for sticking around. Thanks for watching the video. Have you read these books? Let me know in the comments if you agree, if you disagree. Were they for you? Were they not for you? Personally, the Coho books were not for me. Archer's voice? I'm happily surprised to say that that was for me and I did not see that coming in the best way possible. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you like me and you want to hear me talk about books more, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, all that good stuff. You know the YouTube blurbs that get at the end. Anyway, thanks for being here. The next video that I'm posting is going to be my Readers Take Denver vlog, but I'm also, the one after that is going to be all about Emily Henry with a little fun end cap doing a little Emily Henry Midnight release party for her new title. Anyway, thanks for being here. We'll see you next time. Bye.